I think the first thing I would do is figure out a general formula for elasticity, and then we can plug in the price. So our general formula here is negative P. What should we plug in for the derivative? Well, here's the derivative that we calculated. And what should I plug in in the denominator? The original. That's the original formula. And when I wrote the formula, I used D for demand, and this problem is using Q for quantity demanded, but those are the same concept. So we get a kind of complicated looking formula. This is our general formula for calculating our elasticity. What, what did you say you were doing wrong before? Oh, uh, we got um, the less than and the greater than one confused. Oh, all right. So we kept checking the back of the book, and we were understanding where we were going wrong. Right. Yeah, this is very important. Okay. But I think it's pretty intuitive. Um, if an elasticity is big, um, that means that uh, the uh, demand is changing a lot. And if it's small, it's not changing very much. This gives us our elasticity. You could simplify this formula. Uh, using some algebra, but all we need here is a single elasticity, um, so we could just plug in 6 for that. Well, let's go ahead and get a number for that. Incidentally, you could do this all in one step on your calculator as long as you put parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. You just need to put parentheses in to let the calculator know that the numerator is all one piece and the denominator is all one piece. That's easier for me to keep track of than doing all the steps separately. All right, but anyway, you got the number two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our elasticity is two. If you're a businessman, would you hope for your or your whatever you're selling to be elastic? Well, that, that's a good question. Let's finish off the problem, and then we'll talk about that more in a second. So remind me about that. It depends that if it's inelastic and your profit's already going up. Let's, uh, okay. let, let's get back to that in a second. That is an important issue. But let's just finish off the problem. So what was the answer to part A? Two, so therefore it's elastic. Yeah. So when elasticity is big, it's elastic. And when the elasticity is small, it's inelastic. Well, big and small relative to what? What number do we compare the elasticities to? One. One, yeah. So we're comparing the elasticities to the number one. When it's big relative to one, it's elastic. And when it's small relative to one, it's inelastic. So this is elastic demand. Do they have the answers in the back? Is this the right answer for this one? Yeah. Yeah? Excellent. All right. And what's the answer to part B? Yes. Oh, what, how will it increase? It'll increase. No, they sh it should be lower to... Wait, hold on. Oh, wait, so I'm reading the long... Or the, I'm reading 22. If the price is lower, it will increase. When the price goes down, what will happen to the revenue? Increase. That's correct. And why is that? Because. Because. Because demand is going up, so 
you're dividing a bigger number by a small number? No. No. Exactly. Now, this is the elasticity function and not the revenue function. Uh, so maybe this is the best way to look at it. Here's what the revenue depends on. Now, we've decided to lower the price. So the demand is going to go up. Is the demand going to go up by a lot or a little? Um, a little. A little, too. Now we have elastic demand. Does elastic demand tell us that the demand is going to change a lot or a, a lot. little? A lot. Which I think is the opposite of your, your first guess there. So we still need to work a bit on what elasticity means. When the elasticity is big, that means that the quantity demanded is very changeable. It changes I, I a lot. I just wasn't sure if since 2 is close to 1, if that makes a difference. Ah, I see. Okay, yeah. Right. So, well, it's not going to increase as much as if it was the number three. Right. That's true. Okay, but all we really right. care about is to compare this to the number one. Okay. So, okay. it's going to increase by a lot because this is bigger than one. Okay. The quantity is going, to, uh, is going to increase. Lowering the price will always increase the quantity that you're selling. The only question is whether it's going to go up by a lot or by a little. So, should I put, uh, I'm going to put an upward sloping, uh, I'm going to put an upward pointing arrow here. Should I put a big arrow or a uh, small arrow? I should put an arrow that's bigger than this one. The whole point of this elasticity is that the change in the quantity will be bigger than the change in the price. Okay. In fact, maybe to be precise, this arrow should be twice as big as this one. What the elasticity is telling us is that the percentage change in the quantity will be twice as big as the percentage change in the price. Okay. That's our interpretation of elasticity. This number here came out to be two. So why will it increase? So, and one thing that would be helpful here is when we're uh, talking about this subject, one thing we want to avoid is using the word it. We don't want to say it will increase because there's many different things that are changing here. The quantity will increase and the revenue will increase. So we have to talk about which one we're talking about. The revenue will increase because? The revenue will increase because the quantity goes up by more than the price goes down. So this little diagram here is designed to give us the explanation for why the total revenue is going to go up. So I would suggest actually using this on these problems. If they ask you what happens to the revenue, remind yourself that revenue is price times quantity, and put down some arrows that show which way the price and the quantity are changing. Well, I put a medium-sized arrow here for price, and then I know, I know the quantity is going to go up from common sense. Common sense tells you that when you lower the price, people will demand more. The question, though, is will this be a big upward arrow or a small one? Well, that's what the elasticity tells us. The elasticity tells us that the quantity is going to change by more than the price. All right, and since, this, since Q is going up more than T is going down, we should end up with the revenue going up. Okay. So that's why you were right in the first place. The revenue is going up. So again, try to avoid thinking in terms of it when you're doing these problems, because there's three different things that are changing. Price, quantity, and revenue. And we don't want to get those confused. So in order to raise the revenue, they should lower their prices. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea, because what they really care about is profit, not revenue. So this would only be part of their decision. But this is the part of their decision we've learned how to deal with. So if all they cared about was revenue, they would lower their prices. Now let's get back to the, the question you guys asked earlier. Is it good or bad to have an elastic demand? Well, it's neither good nor bad. It's just information. Okay. Um, so again, if you're facing an elastic demand, that is information that maybe you should lower your price to get more revenue. And if you're fa facing an inelastic demand, that is information that you should raise your price to get more revenue. Okay. So the elasticity simply gives you information about how you might adjust in order to increase your profits. It's not really intrinsically good or bad in and of itself.